ketchup is made from tomatoes, isn't it? And where are the tomatoes? Well, this, in fact, is the main misconception, that ketchup is made from tomatoes. In reality, the main ingredient for ketchup production is tomato paste. Look, yes, you may. Yeah? See where it's kept? Tomato paste. Yes. And tomato paste is made from tomatoes, but these are separate, very large production plants. And these plants are usually located where tomatoes are growing. This is a seasonal production and only lasts three months. So in those three months, the producers have to make enough tomato paste to last a year until the next season begins. So you mean that one crescent our region isn't enough for this task? Not enough, of course. Tomato paste is delivered to the plant in sealed bags. They're opened without a person participating. The bag goes between rotating shafts. Due to this, tomato mass is squeezed out into the container. And from a technological point of view, what decision was made to squeeze everything up to the last drop out of a bag? Well, here are these special shafts. Yes, I'm talking about them. Specially designed to let the bag pass between them and all tomato paste, literally, to the last drop, stays in the reservoir. Tomato paste, before turning into ketchup, goes into this white room the laboratory of microbiology. Here, each batch is checked for bacteria that can harm consumers' health and affect the quality of the final product adversely. The raw material is tomato paste, which ketchup is, in fact, made of. So we are going to study it for general microbial content, for E. coli bacteria, for yeast and mold, and for lactic acid microorganisms. Samples of the paste are placed in solutions of nutrient media that are favorable for bacterial growth. If there are unwanted microorganisms contained in the product, after a few days their colonies will multiply and you'll be able to see them with the naked eye. So we have standards and there's a special standard for each raw material. If we count the colonies, and if we find that there are within these norms, then everything is okay. This is within the norm. And if not, then this material is rejected and sent to the supplier. Tomato paste begins turning into ketchup after additional ingredients are added to it. Good afternoon. Hello. I'm Misha. Dennis. I'd really like to help you, but I don't know what you are doing yet. Tell me about it, okay? Here we weigh dry ingredients. You can try to weigh them. It'd be great. Would you like to? Yes, I'd be happy to, of course. So first you need gloves. Yeah. A respirator. Hands and a respirator. That is dry mixtures. They are so thin. Yes. You need to protect your lungs. Yes, yes, yes. These white powders, salt, starch, and sweetener are the main dry ingredients to produce classic ketchup. First, we need to weigh salt. So let's weigh salt. Let's try. We must weigh five, six, seven. Is that pounds? Yes. Where? Is that how I open it? Exactly. Just cut along. Okay, almost there. Nine. How much should there be? Five, six, seven. Okay. Here it is necessary to take a little out. Accuracy is the main thing. A little bit more. Does it go back here? Yes. The recipe includes a sweetener, saccharin. It is labeled as E954. This additive is many times sweeter than sugar and has a lower calorie value. About 20 kilograms are added into two tons of the product. Another white powder, which is a must for ketchup, is starch. Okay, and why do we even need it? Starch. Let's together. Starch is added to dry ingredients to make it thicker. It's like it absorbs water. Uh, to give texture, right? Yes. It's probably necessary to make it thicker. And we need 60 of starch, don't we? Yes. We've weighed. Yes. Now we're taking dry ingredients to the hopper, taking a hydraulic trolley. Ah, uh, I was thinking right now. Starch. The plant produces ketchup of the first category, which, in contrast to the category extra, can contain starch. 
perfect parking. Right here, there is a specially marked place. And here, the sequence is important. Starch, salt. It is important. Salt always goes first because it goes down easier and it won't get stuck in the hopper. The starch, salt, and sugar, which we weighed earlier, get into the tomato paste. In addition to them, the classic recipe for ketchup includes spices, cinnamon, and pepper. Are we closing it? Yes. All of the ingredients get into the tank KPT-1, where they are dosed out of. Is it right beneath us? Yes, beneath us. They are mixed with tomato paste, syrup, vinegar, with all the liquid ingredients. Yeah, that's all. After that, you get a raw ketchup phase. Coming up next in the program additives, what diseases were patients treated for with ketchup in the 19th century? Why do sauces without added preservatives have longer expiry periods? And how many kinds of pepper are added to the sauce? Ketchup hasn't always been a sauce. In the early 19th century, it was used as a medicine and sold in pharmacies. This tomato medicine was prescribed for stomach pain. That sounds a little strange. Doctors of that time were guided by the fact that the ketchup includes a substance, lysopene, which is responsible for the red color of tomatoes and affects the work of the digestive system favorably. I wonder whether the prescriptions included, in addition to ketchup, sausages and pasta. Modern manufacturers of ketchup don't always stick to the classic recipe. On supermarket shelves, you can find a variety of flavors. It is various spices and seasonings added to the prepared base for ketchup that are responsible for the flavors. We're opening. What is there? Well, now the content looks as if there are some accidents at the production facility. Well, it's only for now because it's still raw, not cooked. I see. Okay. So we put the grate here, and through the grate we pour spices. Additional ingredients are mostly dried vegetables and extracts. Their combinations give ketchup different flavor. Oh, yeah. Well, can I uh, start with parsley? Yes, do it. <laughs> That's it. Next goes the pepper. Oh. All right, pepper. Well now, chili extract, one pack, one pack of each spice. That's, I think, a very hot thing, isn't it? Yes, one piece. Well, that's it. Well, next, let's take the pink Brazilian pepper. Okay, now let's add some chili pepper. We're closing it. The red button start. We should press it. That's it. After all the ingredients have been added to the tomato paste, the mixture for the future ketchup is finally ready. The cooking process can start. It is completely closed. This is necessary to prevent bacteria from entering the product, which will affect the quality. This is the zone where the main technological stages of ketchup production take place. And earlier you've seen how different mixtures are mixed and uh, these are perhaps the only open places where you can see the intermediate stages of ketchup production. Moreover, I took an active part in this. Yes, quite right. These units are where the most important processes take place, thanks to which the raw mixture turns into ketchup. Excess air is removed from the base for the sauce, which is called deaeration. Then homogenization is passing through the mixture through a narrow opening under high pressure. This is necessary to ensure the desired texture. And pasteurization is heating the would-be ketchup to high temperatures. Pasteurization is, of course, the main stage ensuring the microbiological stability of ketchup. ketchup. 
Pasteurization is a process affecting the shelf life of ketchup. Oddly enough, the sauces with the highest content of tomato paste and without preservatives have the longest shelf life. Ketchup can be produced in different ways, using different technologies. One of the best known and common technologies is cooking. That is, ketchup is processed, subjected to heat treatment. And thanks to this, ketchup can be stored for a long time. And if you see on the label that the shelf life isn't very long, that is about six months, then most likely it means that the ketchup is made with preservatives. That is, using the so-called cold technology, when it isn't heated up to a sufficient temperature. The main preservative that is used is sorbic acid or its salts. And sorbic acid is active for half a year in the product. Therefore, you'll never set an expiry date for a day further than half a year. It just cannot stand it longer than that. So, Misha Maslov has spent the whole day watching how his favorite sauce, ketchup, is cooked. He hasn't tried the final product, though. It's time for a tasting room. The shift is finished. The produced ketchup is packed and sent to warehouses. And our presenter is still hungry. Well, here it is, the final product. Moreover, I haven't eaten anything for the whole day. But something tells me that this will be the first production which I will leave hungry. Because ketchup, here it is. I didn't take any spaghetti or pizza with me. Therefore, ah, well, 